Today's video, I'm going to explain the basics of timeline in your animation software, so don't go anywhere. Hey guys, my name is Eon and welcome to my Start Animating YouTube channel. The channel that is specifically aimed at everyone that is new to animation. And if that is you, welcome, you are at the right place. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click on that little notification bell so that you can get notified every week when I upload a brand new video. And if you are new to animation and you don't know what you're going to need um, in order to start uh, your animation journey uh, while well, I compiled the animation startup guide it is a guide that consists of everything that you're going to need from drawing tablets to software, um, 2D animation software, 3D animation software as well as other software like storyboarding, uh, video or uh, audio recording and mixing for your voiceovers etc. So everything that you are going to need to create animations. So I created this guide with links um, to suggestions so that you can maybe uh, look at all the different options, the prices, etc. and make yourself or make an informed decision. So if you're interested in the description box below, there's a link and I will send that um, guide to you if you want to get your animation journey started. Now today we are going to look at timelines inside your animation software and the reason I'm uh, going over the timeline because it is almost the, the backbone of your animation software. If you are doing animation, um, understanding the timeline is really going to help you. Um, if I can use an analysis, um, if your animation is a is an airplane then your timeline is the cockpit. Um, so because the timeline is where you are doing all the work, it is basically the backbone of everything that you do. Everything that you do in your animation will basically appear inside the timeline. Now it's very important, I'm just going to cover the basics of the timeline um, and then obviously every animation software, the basics are the same, but obviously... Um, the interface will differ, um, some things will operate a little bit different, like for example, a lot of your animation softwares, they will have the graph curve or the graph editor, and so other softwares, the one that I'm going to show today, doesn't have that. So it is very important to know your software as well, and I'll just share a little bit more on that a bit later in this video. So basically, what is the timeline? Well, the timeline is the area here at the bottom where um, it basically consists of all the frames of your animation. So let's say, for example, your animation, um, the part that you are animating is, say, a minute long. Then basically, um, it will. if I'm going to go to the beginning and if I press play, then there you can see it moves. It's almost like video editing software so you can see the cursor is moving and it is playing but you'll also see there are blocks now those are keyframes okay so when you make a adjustment to your character or to a prop or whatever in your animation scene it will create a keyframe um, here in your timeline Okay, but one thing to remember before you start animating, you need to know to get your timing right, you'll need to know what frame rate are your animation software working at. For example, if I look at Cartoon Animator and I go to Project Settings, you'll see that it is one second equals 30 frames. So it is 30 frames per second, which means if I go to frame 30 from zero, to 30 is one second okay so if I go to frame 60 from 0 to frame 60 is 60 is two seconds so that will really help you to determine the timing when you are going to animate any movement so for example if you're gonna make a character punch and you say okay this punch will take a third of a second which means um, your keyframes is 30 frames per second, so it's going to take your character 10 frames 
to punch. So because 10 frames is a third of 30, which is one second, and now you know if your character is going to punch and it's a third of a second, you're going to need 10 frames to make that movement and your timing will be correct. So it's very important when you're going to animate to determine um, how long will it take for that specific action to take place, um, how many seconds, how many split seconds, and then you work that and you convert it over to your frames because you know one second equals 30 frames and you can then work from there and your timing is um, done. Okay, so basically what's going to happen with your timeline now again every software will be different but the basics are there so everything in your scene will appear in your timeline so for example i've got this character selected and there it shows dummy s and that is my character now if i am going to select um if i'm going to okay that's the wrong one let's click there okay now, see what's going to happen. All of a sudden, you'll see hip, T stands for transform, S stands for sprite. But if I'm going to select his uh, right arm, there you see right arm. T stands for transpose so, or transform, so you can now, now move it. So, let's say I want to animate his arm moving. Okay, so, and let's say it's going to take him... On frame one, let's move it there. And let's say it's going to take him one second to move his arm up. So one second is 30 keyframes. And I can go to keyframe 30. Now see what's going to happen in my timeline. It's going to make a keyframe if I'm going to move it. And there you see it made keyframes. Okay. So... If I press play, this is going to be one second for his arm to move. And there you go. And so now let's say it's going to take him half a second to move his forearm. Okay, so half a second will be 15 keyframes. So we go to keyframe 45. Now if I'm going to select his forearm, it is going to add it here in the timeline so I select it and there it is and so if we press play it's going to be one second for his arm to move up half a second for his forearm and if we press play there you go and there it moves now you there's a lot of things you can do it's not just movement for example you can see if I have this character uh, on that on frame 45 seconds this character's hand is behind his face. So at a certain keyframe, let's say right there, just before his hand touches his face, I can now create a keyframe saying his hand from this keyframe, his right um, arm, let's find his right arm, Here you go. It says right forearm must be in front of his face. Let's face. Okay. And we need to do the same with the right hand. So let's find the right hand. Right hand in front of face. Okay. So now you can see it created a new um, keyframe. So if I'm going to from this point on, you can see his hand, but you'll also have to do is um, let's do that as well. Right hand nub front of face so you can see his hand is now in front of the face but you'll also have to do um, with his um, fingers as well because his fingers are still behind as you can see 
But as you can see right there, it created a layer and it created a keyframe. So everything that you do is happening inside your timeline. That's why I say your timeline is like your cockpit of your animation project. Everything happens there. And then like every timeline, you will have a play button, a stop button, go to the start, go to the end. Yeah, it shows on what keyframe you are. So if I go to 30, it shows I am on keyframe 30. And so you have a lot of control. So if I press play, that happens. So as you can see, your timeline is where everything happens, where you do your animation. And then obviously, if you have graph editors inside your timeline, you can also adjust your graph editor so that your movement is maybe a, lit a little bit more smoother. So you can control the smoothness of your movement as well. It is not as linear as it is in this animation um, example that I've created here. So that is the timeline basically explained. It's just everything that you do happens inside your timeline and it's very important to first of all see on what frame rate your animation software is operating and that will be your foundation. You will be able to see um, how or plan out your movement, your timing, etc. And then um, it's also very important just to understand your software. Every software's timeline will be a little bit different, but the basics are the same. So um, what I will do is on my website, um, or what I'll do is I'll put links in the description below as well um, to two um, online um, course websites. The one is Studio Animation 101. The other one is Bloop Animation. And between the two of them, they have courses on almost all the basic animation software from 2D and 3D animation. So if you want to learn your software a lot better, uh, feel free to go to those two websites and see if they have the software that you are using and then just take a course because that will also help you understand that software so much better. So guys, that is it for me. I really hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to if you enjoyed it, click on that thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Remember to also subscribe and I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys then next week with another video. So from me, God bless and see you next week.